Okay, Melanie, it looks like, oh, we're still building. Give it another second. Let's go, I think. You ready, Melanie? We're ready. All right, well, welcome everybody. I am Monique Moyer. I am going to chair the meeting today in Chair Wonderman's absence. He sends his regrets and also, uh, as you'll hear, his uh, enthusiasm for some really good news that I think everybody's aware of from last week, but um, I'd love to call the roll to order. So Melanie, may I turn it back to you? Sure, Vice Chair Moyer. Here. Director Alba. Here. The Director Du. Here. We have a quorum. Terrific, thank you. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, we're gonna start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. And so uh, I will start us, are we ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do I still have all of you? Quiet as mouth. All right, great. Well, thank you everybody for coming to the meeting today. It's a virtual one given some um, logistics challenge we had, but we look forward to seeing everyone back in public in, at our next meeting in early March. Uh, as most of you who are uh, regulars know, uh, to avoid background noise, you've all been muted as coming in. Uh, and if you would like to do public comments, you have two choices, and we really hope you will do public comment. But if you have two choices. You can send an email to board of directors at watertransit.org uh, and just letting uh, the uh, board secretary know that you want to have a chance to speak on a particular item and what that item is, and that will put you at the front of the line. If not, you can simply just uh, hit the raise your hand button in the reactions there, I think is where it is, and uh, we will give, a, give you a shout uh, and ask you to comment. So look forward to uh, jumping into the meeting. So the next item is the report of the board chair. Given that Chair Wonderman is not here, we'll skip that item and go straight into reports of the directors. And with that, I will uh, open the floor and invite my colleagues, um, Director Alba and Director Du, to comment. So do either of you want to go first? All right, Director Alba. Um, I actually don't have any updates today. I, um, it's wonderful to see so many um, familiar faces on the call. And um, that's it for this month. OK, thank you. Director Du? Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to share that um, we uh, did go and present to the Vallejo City Council on uh, uh, the 24th of January about the changes to the ferry terminal um, and, um, you know, how the, uh, the cost and the frequency of the dredging is, is becoming such that we need to change that, um, that access um, and landing point. So, um, very well received by the council. There was a lot of feedback from the council members that they wanted to see um, an expansion of services going from Vallejo to other locations such as um, Oakland and whatnot. So just wanted to share that, but everyone was very uh, um, excited for the presentation and um, happy for uh, the services we provide the community. Terrific. Well, thank you. All right, and for myself, uh, I, just, I can't pass up the moment to be, I, I guess, to admit a humongous sigh of re relief and um, maybe a, a scream of woohoo for the the news on RM3. Uh, thank you to to everyone, um, most notably all of our uh, esteemed executive directors and staff. Many of you are here on on the call today, and to. Chair Wonderman and others for the incredible difficult work that you did in the first place to make the case for RM3 uh, and then now to see that it is going to come to fruition after all and 
move forward in being able to fund the vision that um, uh, some of which um, Pip and you were just talking about uh, to, to move forward. As, as all of you know, we have many uh, really critical capital projects that have been waiting for this moment. And thank you to the, to the team for coming up with uh, uh, really great other ways to keep them moving forward uh, in hopes that we got to this day and now we are arrived and, and can respond to the effort. So kudos to everyone and, and, and um, uh, Stephen to you and, and your team as well. It's a really important moment and I'm really pleased about it. Uh, and then I just wanna note that um, uh, there's been a lot going on in in with many of our other fellow transit uh, colleagues, and not the least of which is all of them trying to to address their financial uh, gaps and concerns due to the utilizations of their systems. And uh, I, I recognize that this is something that is putting extreme pressure on all of us. Uh, and I, I really couldn't be more grateful for the collaboration that. Uh, Seamus, you and your team are leading uh, among the, the, at least within the Bay Area, if not nationally. And, and I hope that this is a, an important moment to bring to light um, the value and importance of public transportation, because we, we certainly don't want to take a big step backwards and then find ourselves in need uh, in, in just a couple of years, because uh, certainly there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, just a lot of change undergoing, at least in, in the in the in the sector that I'm in right now, so we're, we'll see where it lands uh, throughout the rest of the year. But really appreciate uh, all the crystal balls that everybody's trying to have, but more importantly, just the collectivity of the communication coordination. So thank you. So that's it with for the director's reports. Uh, so we'll go over to a report of staff and up staff. And for that, Seamus, over to you. Thank you, Vice Chair Moyer. Um, <clears throat> I, I do have the business plan uh, update, and we did get a survey out, uh, and we've been uh, receiving good response, I understand, uh, to that survey. Thanks to our partners who have been working with us on the business plan for sharing that information, sharing that survey, and building awareness about it. It's going to be uh, great to get more information from the public about uh, how they envision uh, WIDA looking in, in the long term. Uh, and it's great that we now have uh, resources to help accomplish that vision. Uh, we've been talking about RM3 as uh, a potential um, game changer uh, for ferry service around the region. And uh, now the pressure's on for us to deliver. The business plan is a huge part of that. Uh, we've updated uh, in the process of updating the business plan information so that we don't talk about RM3 as just an assumption, uh, but as something that will actually be a re reality uh, for this agency. And there are some details that need to be resolved. And so I wanted to just um, talk about next steps with respect to the immediacy of RM3 funding and how it might play out. Uh, MTC uh, does have a, a major role in this. They will be developing some policies around uh, primarily the funding that has already been uh, collected. Uh, and as we know, there uh, is a little more than $500 million in toll revenue that's been collected associated with RM3. Uh, it gets complex because there are there's $600 million in letters of no prejudice that MTC has issued uh, since RM3 was approved that allow uh, agencies to uh, commit or expend funds and be reimbursed uh, by RM3 revenues eventually. Uh, that doesn't mean that those funds have been expended, of course. Uh, $25 million of that 600 is for the Mission Bay Terminal, uh, and we haven't expended those funds. Uh, but that project is certainly one uh, that is in line to benefit from RM3. We're very excited about that. Uh, so how much of the funds that have been collected uh, are reserved for WIDA under the very clear direction that the uh, commission has to provide our agency with 35 million in operating uh, funds every, every year? Uh, that is not use it or lose it funding. Anything that we don't use gets rolled over into reserves. Uh, so uh, there are some questions that need to be addressed about the funds that have been collected so far and how they apply uh, to those reserves. And then, of course, there's $300 million in capital funding that we look forward to using to leverage other uh, regional and state and federal funding sources to be able to accomplish uh, all of the great things that the business plan will identify uh, as our future. 
uh, those discussions with MTC are imminent. We've, uh, we'll be meeting with staff. We'll also be meeting with commissioners uh, to talk about the potential benefits of RM3 for ferry service in their communities, make sure that they remember uh, all the reasons why they supported this bridge toll measure and, uh, and reiterate their support for uh, those improvements. Um, so that is uh, where RM3 stands. Look forward to reporting back more uh, on this. I just want to acknowledge a, a few folks. There are so many people that help deliver RM3 uh, to the to the region, and uh, just specifically, uh, Vice Chair Moyer. Thanks for mentioning uh, Chair Wonderman. Uh, his role, not just as WIDA chair, but as uh, 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 CEO of the Bay Area Council, he was instrumental uh, in making sure that the measure was passed and that it included. Uh, what it does include for WIDA. And then of course our two champions, uh, David Chu, who was in the assembly at the time uh, and stepped up uh, for ferry service to make sure it was included in the measure. Uh, and assembly member Rob Bonta, uh, who was also in the assembly at the time and was a, a great champion uh, for ferry service. Uh, and then uh, our former executive director, Nina Rannells, one of my first uh, calls uh, when I heard the news, uh, not just to congratulate her, but to thank her uh, for everything that she did uh, to make sure that RM3 became a reality. So uh, just great to see and uh, look forward to reporting back more uh, when, we, when we understand more. Uh, just a little bit on the financial report. Um, You'll see that we dipped a little below the line on fair revenue, uh, and that's understandable with the dip over the winter months, uh, but we've already seen it bounce back. Uh, it's not captured in the report because it's just over the last two or three weeks, but uh, ridership really has uh, started to bounce back the way that we expect it to uh, when we get uh, out of the holidays and into the spring. So uh, we look forward to that continuing, and we have every reason to believe that we'll be on uh, pace to meet the fair revenue assumptions that that are included in the budget. Um, our, uh, just a, a quick update on our federal and state um, legislative activity. Uh, good news, bad news, RM3, great win. Uh, we did not um, receive an FTA grant that we applied for. Uh, fair, it came out of the first zero and low emission uh, ferry vessel program uh, that FTA has ever administered. Uh, there was $50 million available. Um, they awarded most of those funds to Alaska and Maine. And if you're keeping track of how the, uh, the BIL legislation was ultimately passed and the senators who were instrumental in making sure it was passed, you know that there were two uh, from Alaska and Maine respectively that were critical to that effort. Uh, so most of those funds uh, were uh, uh, awarded to, to ferry service in those states, but there are uh, subsequent rounds that we'll be competing for. Uh, and there's not just the ferry boat uh, zero and low emission program, but the normal pre existing ferry boat discretionary grant program that is upcoming as well. Um, on the state front, uh, we did um, thankfully uh, through a new champion in the assembly, uh, assembly member Lori Wilson. Um, we were successful in getting legislation introduced by her office to exempt the uh, purchase of, of zero emission vessels uh, from uh, state sales tax. Uh, buses received that exemption today if they're zero emission, and so no reason uh, that ferry vessels shouldn't also uh, be exempt from the state sales tax. Uh, she's introduced legislation that would make that happen, and we look forward to working with her office to uh, see that it's passed. Uh, I think that is all to report. You have uh, reports in your packet that cover uh, information in more detail and staff is prepared to respond to any questions or comments that you might have. Thank you. Terrific, thank you very much, Director Murphy. Directors, any questions or comments on the director's report? Uh, I, I actually have one on, on the financial statements. I, I, you mentioned this briefly that there was just a dip in the revenues and we dip, and we bounced right back, but I was looking particularly at the bridge toll revenues line item, um, which seems to be a bit, quite a bit behind uh, for where we are in the year, at least to my novice eye. Is there anything in particular going on there? Um, th there's nothing in particular going on there. The, br the bridge toll money pays for certain expenses <clears throat> after we pay for other expenses using the federal money. And at the end of the month, it all balances based on our operating costs. So if the operating costs that that 
um, revenue pays for our literal under budget than the revenues are under budget. But towards the end of the year, we make sure we balance so that we are drawing down the maximum uh, for each toll funds. Um, so it's in the end, it all balances. In some months, it, it will go up and down depending on what we're paying for that month. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. I was wondering if that was one of the, if that was the factor. So thank you for explaining that. Sure. Um, so Director Murphy, I just want to th thank you in particular for, uh, first of all, for reaching out to Nina. What a, what a gracious but well-deserving gesture. And I really appreciate you doing that and hopefully on all of our behalf. So thank you for that. Uh, and also for, um, for uh, calling out the incredible hard work of uh, then assembly members too and, and Vonta. So thank you very much for that uh, call out as well. Um, I forget, but do we, do, do, do we take public comment on the director's report? We do, okay. So Melanie, any public comment that's signed up? Nobody has signed up to speak. All right, anybody on the call that wants to raise a hand? Okay, I don't see any. So I think we will go on to the next item, which is the consent calendar. So there's two items on the consent calendar. Uh, the first is to adopt the resolution regarding remote meetings pursuant to Assembly Bill 361. And the second is to adopt the board meeting minutes from our January 12th, 2023 meeting. Uh, do any of the directors wanna segregate those items or move forward as a whole? Okay. I move uh, to so we have a, have a motion from Director Alba. Second. And a second from Director Du. So, Melanie, if you would. Vice Chair Moyer? Uh, yes. Director Alba? Yes. And Director Du? Yes. The consent calendar carries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is our big item of the day, which is to adopt the mitigated negative declaration and mitigation monitoring and reporting program for the Alameda Main Street Ferry Terminal Refurbishment Project. So, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you, Vice Chair Moyer and Board of Directors. Uh, this project will replace components of the Alameda Main Street Ferry Terminal to improve operations and seismic safety. Project details are summarized in the staff report. Construction of the project involves closure of an active ferry terminal. Uh, the construction schedule, therefore, is of utmost importance. It's, it's anticipated that we will be able to drive all of the steel pipe piles with a vibratory hammer. Uh, however, if an obstruction has occurred during that process, uh, there's severe schedule risk associated with not having the ability to utilize an impact pile driver to finish driving those piles. Uh, in order to use an impact pile driver, an incidental take permit is required from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife due to potential impact to sensitive fish species. Uh, in order to obtain that incidental take permit, we must first adopt the mitigated negative declaration before you today to satisfy the requirements of the California Fish and Wildlife, Department of Fish and Wildlife. Staff is engaged with uh, the department for the incidental take permit. Uh, it is well underway, as well as with other agencies that also require CEQA, um, adoption of a CEQA MND or other document prior to their approval. Uh, we have prepared the ISMND in accordance with the state CEQA guidelines. That process is outlined in the staff report. And based on the findings of the initial study and mitigated negative declaration, staff determined there is no substantial evidence that the project will have a significant impact on the environment. WIDA has prepared a mitigation monitoring and reporting program for all the measures required to mitigate or avoid those significant environmental impacts. Those measures include construction air quality requirements, adherence to specific work windows for in-water work and other measures to avoid pile driving impacts on the special status species and other aquatic resources. Uh, there's also measures to reduce construction, noise and vibration impacts, and as, as well as protecting cultural resources. Staff recommends that the board adopt the mitigated negative declaration and mitigation and monitoring reporting program for the project. Uh, that concludes the presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Chad. Thanks for the hard work on this. Uh, directors, any questions? I know it was a good report. All right. Melanie, any comments from the, anybody wanting to speak from the public signed up yet? Uh, nobody signed up to speak. Okay. Anyone on the phone wishing to raise a hand? It's a very passive crowd today. I'm taking it personally. All right. Well, with that, I guess we will uh, call for the vote then. 
Okay, Vice Chair Moyer. Yes. Uh, we have to have a, um, I, a motion. A motion. I'll call for the motion first. Thank you both. I got ahead of myself. Is there a motion? I'll move to approve. And a second. All right. Now, may we? Okay. Uh, Vice Chair Moyer. Yes. Director Alba. Yes. And Director Du. Yes. The item passes. Thank you. Okay. So with that, then we're on to the award. Award the contract to Mason Con Manson Construction Company for design build construction of the Alameda Main Street Ferry Terminal Refurbishment Project. Thank you, Vice Chair Moyer and Board of Directors. Um, so this project uh, is awarded the construction contract to Manson Construction Company uh, for the amount of $7,770,000. It also authorizes the executive director to negotiate uh, the contract for that work and take other, other actions as may be necessary. Uh, and it also includes authorization of project budget increase for the fiscal, fiscal year 22-23 capital budget in the amount of $1,224,986. $1, uh, this will support contract award contingency and other efforts. On March 3rd, 2000. 22, the Board of Directors authorized release of the RFP for the design build construction of this project. Staff released that RFP on November 9th, 2022. Um, the project was delayed due to the timing and the amount of effort that it took to complete the environmental review uh, as we just adopted in the previous item. Uh, with that, the we'd have received proposals from four offers on December 21st, 2022. Uh, the RFP outlined a two-step best value proposal process that required proposals to submit a technical proposal as well as a separately sealed price proposal package. After initial evaluation of the technical proposals, the project evaluation committee determined that three of the four proposers were within the competitive range. Interviews were then conducted with those proposers and technical scores were finalized after the interviews. Uh, next, the price proposals were reviewed and scored according to uh, the process outlined in the RFP. After the final scoring, the project evaluation committee concluded that the proposal from Manson Construction Company uh, provided the best value to WIDA for this project. Uh, the staff recommends that the board approve a contract to Manson Construction Company. The capital budget increase uh, is proposed to fully fund the project, including this construction contract, a 10% contingency and additional funds for engineering support, construction management and permitting costs. Uh, if approved, the revised overall budget will be $9,760,000. Uh, this budget process is consistent with delivery of other WIDA capital projects where we do the best we can to estimate the total cost based on the engineer's estimate for construction, as well as the level of effort required for uh, our own WIDA engineering to develop the project, construction management, environmental review, uh, permitting costs, and then we adjust the final budget after we know that actual final cost of the, the construction after we get the uh, final price proposals. Uh, the project budgets, this project budget in particular was influenced by volatility in the construction costs, including labor and materials, uh, the schedule delay experience because of the environmental review, uh, and also the permitting. There's some costs associated with uh, the final permitting requirements uh, from the resource agencies. Uh, funding for this increase is available through WIDA allocated funding in the FHWA ferry boat program. WIDA currently has uncommitted funds that must be obligated prior to the close of the federal fiscal year. Uh, and that concludes my presentation on this item, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Terrific. Thank you again, Chad. Directors, any questions? I have any a comments? question. Sure, go ahead, please. Yeah, I just was curious if we had, because um, uh, I'm not as familiar with the contractors in this space, and so I'm just curious if we have any past experience with this company um, on other projects. Yes, we, we do have uh, some extensive project history with Manson Construction Company, most recently being construction of the Richmond Ferry Terminal Project, which was a, a new ferry terminal, but also very similar to the exact the scope that we have for this project and they did a very good job completing that that project on time and, and on budget perfect answers my question thank you you're welcome director alba did you also have a question or a comment yeah i 
I'm, I'm, I, all of this looks great. I don't have any concerns. I'm just, um, I do have that question about DBE and SBE <laughs> participation. Um, seeing that this is funded at, at the 60% level by federal grants. And uh, I'm just trying to find my numbers here. Where did it go? And um, there's just, there's no DBE participation and a very low SBE participation compared mm -hmm. to what we would expect. And I understand that with all other projects that are ongoing over the next several years that we're still fine, but with, this is not a vessel or boat ferry construction where we might have limitations. This is a company that is present in California and should be able to find SBEs and DBEs in the space. Um, so I, I would love to hear a little bit about that. And if we can't, these numbers aren't going to change in the contract or in the next phase of procurement, but is this something that um, Manson could work on over the next couple of years while working on this project? Is there something they can do to encourage DBE and SBE participation among, among their team members? I can take that, Director Alba. Um, so uh, Mance, this is a waterside construction contract, and this is one of the types of areas that fall into, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, that not fall into, but that garner very little DBE participation. So I think we talked about this during the DBE update in early or mid-2022. Uh, it's vessel construction, vessel refurbishment, and waterside construction um, that really lack that kind of participation. Um, Terrence is putting together and spearheading a, a DBE workshop that's being held on the 15th of February, and Manson is one of the prime contractors that are involved in that. We're talking about a whole slew of things. I was going to put together a little blurb for you guys next month, um, but some of the um, topics will be covering ways to break down the barriers for DBEs to enter these types of fields. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lauren. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there, there we are taking some other steps in our pre-proposal um, conferences. We are getting the word out as extensively as we can, and we're concluding those meetings now with uh, Terrence has been very helpful in, in leading a, a network networking session immediately following those, and we're starting to get a little bit more participation uh, from that effort as well. Yeah, thank you. I had the same question, so I really appreciate the conversation, and and, and I think um, you know it's a chicken and an egg. We've got to get some awards going if we really want to see the the engagement and the effort put in. So I'm I'm hopeful that with with um, the added focus, I know Lauren, you've been hard at work at this for a long time, and and I do recognize that the type of work that we are talking about. Uh, and the nature of the equipment and the capital that is involved makes it more difficult, but I, I'm not persuaded it's impossible. Um, and so I, I do think we've, well, I was going to say, put our, we need to put our foot in the water. I'm trying to think of another type of thing to say, but here, but you get the, my drift. Um, I, I just think we need to, we, we, we've got to get momentum in the space and we, it's going to have to come from us in some fashion where, you know, where it's, it's where it's allowable. Um, and I don't know what that means if I did. I would not be shy about saying so, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear we're taking a hard look at it. Um, but I do think we're, it's going to have to come with more momentum from us. And now that we do have, um, particularly in the region, the the, the money from RM3, um, I'm hoping that that can encourage some, some more participation in the community. Uh, across the board in some fashion, whatever, whatever is allowable with, with the use of those money. Yeah. Um, did you want to say anything else, Director Alba? I, I, I think you're spot on, uh, Director Moyer, in, in that now is the time to, we have so much ahead of us, so much construction projects ahead of us. And, and so getting this at the forefront of our typical primes um, so that they can include smaller um, companies in their bids where it makes sense. And also encouraging, since many of these projects are longer term, encouraging the smaller um, firms or companies to 
um, even during that time, build in time to become DBE or SBE certified with um, the California Youth UCP. I'm just, thank you, Lauren. Thanks, Dr. Dr. Director Alba. Well, I'm just curious, where, of, of the three bids that, I think we got four total, but of the three that are shown here in the, in the staff report, did any of the three bidders have a different level of participation? In other words, did they, did they see a way to participate that maybe Manson didn't? No, they were all pretty consistent with the Manson numbers. Yeah, I, I think, again, Director Alba made a good point, and we have a lot of in modern construction ahead of us, so yes. maybe maybe we make that our focal point going forward. Um, I just want to say, uh, as a user uh, of this particular terminal, um, this is super exciting, and uh, I really look forward to the 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 you know TCO date or the date of completion when when the passengers really get to um, reap the benefits of the work that that all of you have been spearheading and, and the construction that's about to go. This is really um, a long time coming uh, and I think it will be a, a, a great uh, amenity for our, our service line and for our passengers and, and our crew for that matter. So thank you all for having uh, the tenacity to stay with us and, and muscle through the, the EIR process, which is really critical to, to the health of our Bay. Um, and uh, I really look forward to being at the ribbon cutting sometime. And I think in 2023, if all goes according to plan, right? Is that right, Chad? Yes, or, or the, early 2024. Oh, well, we hedged it already. 2023 is pretty sure what I said. I'll shoot for <laughs> no, I'm teasing you. 2023. Yeah, that, we're looking forward to it whenever it is. So thank you for that. All right, I think that brings us to the next item yeah, then. Vice Chair Moyer, could I just ask a, oh, no. a not... contract, but just a follow-up question about that. Um, what will happen with... Um, Oakland to Main Street um, connection during the construction project? As we get further into the design and we have a better handle on the specific construction schedule, we're going to, uh, and we have certainty on that, we're gonna outreach with our ridership base and uh, we will inform them. We're gonna do everything we can up to that point to reduce the amount of time that the uh, terminal is closed. And that is one of the, uh, in the Manson technical proposal, they did have a very good approach to the initial schedule, but also uh, taking steps to further reduce that. Um, and it will really be about informing our riders as early as possible and keeping them up to date and then hopefully finishing as soon as we can. Yeah, thank you. Great, we'll look forward to some updates on that as well. Okay, is there a motion? So move. Thank you. Second. Second. All right, thank you, Melanie. Okay, uh, did you take a public comment or did I just miss that? I did not take public comment. Wow, I'm rushing us. <laughs> public comment, is anyone signed up? No one has signed up. Would anyone like to raise their hand? Quiet group, Alba. Okay, uh, Vice Chair Moyer. Yes. Director Alba. Yes. And Director Dew. Yes. The item passes. Okay, thank you. All right, on to the next item, which is the fiscal year 2024 fair program report. And I'm not sure which of you are presenting that. So I'll have to take, ah, Mike, go for it. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Mike Gowardy with WIDA Planning and Development. Um, we appreciated the, uh, the conversation so much last month that we wanted to continue it this month uh, concerning fair strategy. Um, you know, we, we, we heard loud and clear uh, a consensus amongst the board members that we should generally continue uh, in, in the spirit of the pandemic recovery program fairs uh, that, that have been in place for uh, fiscal year 2022 and, and this far into 23. Um, so we're, we're continuing the conversation just a bit uh, to kind of get the next piece of uh, detail that we need to ultimately um, package up a specific proposal and bring it back to you next month um, to kind of look at the details of what this would look like going forward. Um, and you know, that, that kind of decision point is whether, you know, as a program, um, we should be looking at a multi-year fair program or, you know, something more narrow um, akin to a single year program. Um, so we've laid out uh, those two options uh, as well as a strategy for special event fairs in the written um, uh, staff report. Uh, I'll just spend a little time to briefly summarize them uh, verbally and then hopefully 
um, get have a, have a discussion and get some uh, some direction from the board on this. Uh, in terms of the option for a multi-year program, um, this would look something like a, a program that uh, would extend over a course of five years or so, um, and it would have a schedule of uh, small incremental increases on an annual basis that are really designed um, to kind of limit the impact uh, to our passengers, but at the same time allow the agency to keep um, keep pace with a regular uh, cost inflation of our expenses, um, and then also keep pace with uh, small periodic increases that are done by other regional transit operators that operate in the corridors that we do. Um, so the effect of this would, um, in theory, end up maintaining parity uh, between our fares and the fares charged uh, by comparable rail or bus options. Uh, this approach, uh, multi-year approach, would essentially make the, the policy, uh, fare policy of the pandemic recovery program permanent. Um, and, and we kind of gave a, a preview with the, uh, the attached fare policy uh, uh, document in the staff report of what that um, revised permanent read of fair policy would look like. Um, the uh, multi-year fair program uh, changes on an annual basis would, uh, would occur automatically. Um, so there'd be no additional action uh, on an annual basis required by the board. However, um, you know, it's really important to note uh, that the board would reserve the option um, at any time for any reason uh, to change course or alter uh, the fair program as it, as it seemed as a soft fit. Um, uh, another kind of important note with a multi-year fair program, uh, as a staff, we would commit to um, monitoring uh, the, the status and the performance of the fair program and periodically reporting back to the board in terms of how we're doing. And if uh, there was an, uh, an, a need identified to change course in any way, we would bring that recommendation uh, to you as a potential action. Uh, advantages of the program, uh, by defining a, a methodology or the fares themselves for the, the next five years, it gives some predictability uh, to our passengers on a long-term basis as they, they make potential job or locational decisions that, that uh, you know, entail a commitment to using the ferry. Uh, with the, the great news last week, um, uh, with RM3 being available, we now have a potential uh, source of revenue um, to financially support uh, kind of long-term implementation of the lower fares that have been part of the pandemic recovery program. Um, and then, you know, a last consideration or advantage of this approach is it really streamlines the process for uh, reaching out to our passengers. Um, so, you know, by going out, uh, adopting a five-year program, you'd, we'd essentially do outreach once, um, and then uh, that would uh, kind of go, cover the entire duration of the program as opposed to a single year approach where you're going out every year, regardless of whether there's a, there's a substantial change in the fares or not. Uh, an alternate to the multi-year program um, is pursuing uh, a single year program. So this uh, approach would look, um, would, would entail defining a fare narrowly for next year. Um, so it would be a similar fare uh, for FY24 as the multi-year fare program, but only limited to one year. So again, it would kind of be based on the, the PRP fares, but it would have that small adjustment uh, for cost inflation and uh, the factor to keep pace with uh, the other regional operators. Uh, it would be, uh, as I mentioned, limited to one year. So uh, for subsequent years in FY25, 26, 27 and beyond, um, the staff would be coming back every year with a, a proposed action and public outreach process for the, for the board to adopt fares for the, the subsequent year. Um, and then obviously, uh, you know, a few considerations with approach um, administratively, uh, it would require substantially more effort from not only our staff, but also our partners that help us outreach to passengers. Um, these are the cities, um, the other advocacy groups that that have a connection to our passengers. Um, so, you know, as opposed to going out once at the beginning of a multi-year program, um, there would be an additional effort required by staff and our partners um, to do this on an annual basis. Um, so those are the, the two general approaches we have to continuing the, the PRP fares. <clears throat> Uh, one, one last element that we're looking for um, either confirmation or some direction from the board on are uh, special event fairs. And so our, our approach on special event fairs uh, are to include these, include provisions for the special event fairs in whatever program we go forward with, whether that be a multi-year or single year program. Um, a couple kind of general components of the framework we're looking at um, would be to develop uh, the special event fairs in conjunction with a service plan uh, for special events. And so when we come forward next month with details, um, you're gonna hear not only about what we're anticipating to charge, 
uh, for those special events, but how we um, we plan to offer them. And um, you know, to the point made uh, at last meeting during our discussion, you know, we're going to be looking at opportunities to uh, to enhance special event services to make uh, the services we offer more attractive and, and expansive for our customers. Uh, a second kind of framework to confirm would be uh, as opposed to the status quo approach, where we kind of uh, narrowly set the fares to recover costs and nothing more than that. Um, we would be per, um, pursuing a, a dynamic pricing model here where we're pricing the cost of these services based on demand. Um, and so it, it's worth acknowledging that a potential effect of this could be um, in certain scenarios, the, the revenue from special event services um, exceeding the, the cost of providing those services. Um, and, and so this would create an opportunity to reinvest those services in different priorities uh, uh, of the WIDA system. Um, and then, uh, you know, an, an important third kind of consideration of the special event framework here is really uh, incorporating strategies to promote equ equity. Um, so as we undertake this dynamic pricing approach, um, we wanna be mindful that we're, we're still offering an opportunity for people of all income levels from all backgrounds uh, in, in different communities to have an opportunity to, to take these services uh, to the ballpark or, or to a basketball game. And so, um, for example, you know, one of the types of strategies we would um, bake into the program, uh, you know, in terms of special events would be uh, working with the special event hosts, um, so namely the Warriors or the Giants, um, to, um, uh, to really include ferry rides um, for their outreach programs that are targeted towards lower income uh, or um, uh, otherwise youth or, or disadvantaged communities. Um, so uh, th those are kind of some of the broad strokes that we we're hoping to get your uh, either confirmation or, or direction on. Um, like I said, uh, we'll be taking this input and coming back with a, a detailed proposal uh, next month um, that we would ask uh, for your uh, blessing to take out um, and to the public uh, for their outreach. Um, so that would occur uh, over the months of May and April. Um, based on that outreach, as well as direction from the board, we would package up a final program um, that would bring back to you um, in May uh, for your consideration um, that would potentially uh, approve uh, the fair changes um, for FY24 and potentially beyond um, effective July 1 uh, of this year. Uh, so with that, um, I'll close my summary of the staff report and uh, turn it over to the board and, and public for comment and uh, discussion. Thank you so much, Mike. Really appreciate it. Directors. Comments or questions? Yeah, Dr. so Duke? thank you. Um, so I was uh, excited to see the part on the special events where you will be working with the event hosts to um, uh, to, to promote the, uh, you know, um, including the ferry access in their discount programs that serve disadvantaged communities. So uh, I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I am a fan of uh, the efficiency and the stability and predictability that the multi-year option um, offers um, for, uh, you know, uh, our writers and um, such. So I, I definitely support that option um, going forward. And in terms of like outreach, I'm just wondering, um, like, I'm really curious for those fast track users that are crossing, um, you know, multiple bridges every single day, if there's a way to find out, if there's a way for us to survey them, or if we already perhaps already have this data to find out why they are driving rather than using the ferry, if there's a way for us to um, make it more attractive to them um, to use the ferry. Um, I mean, if they're paying two bridge tolls every day, it just seems like it would make way more sense um, to take the ferry. And I know that there are those fast track users out there. So just wanting, and then also like marketing, um, like just trying to, you know, thinking about increasing ridership, if there's a way to, um, you know, market the service on billboards on 80, for example. Um, I just don't, I don't know what our marketing budget allows for, but um, I would love to see more outreach in that way. Okay. Thank you, all very salient comments. Director Alba? Yes, uh, this is great. Um, I appreciate that uh, the team provided us with the two options of the five-year program versus the proceeding with one year at a, at a time. 
And I, I think staff have made a really good case for proceeding at this time with a five-year program. And the reasons are specified in the report and include the predictability for passengers, um, whether they're moving and can base this on, on, on our, um, the locked program um, and streamlining the public outreach process and saving staff time on something that I know is very, very time consuming. And then maintaining the fare parity with other regional transit operators. It is comforting to know that um, we, the board, uh, in together with staff, can revise and discontinue the multi-year fare program at any point or for any reason, but especially with funding and ridership changes, et cetera. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, I think you're making a really strong case, especially with RM3 funds that will, we can use both for expansion, but also to support this permanent transition uh, towards a more equitable ferry service, um, where instead of having a fare box recovery expectation of 60% or over 40% or, it could be lower than that. Um, and so I think um, all of this uh, is um, fantastic. And, and having that, showing that to, to the public as well and having the extensive outreach here over the spring to get um, passengers and new ridership, um, their input as well. And I like um, um, Director Dew's suggestion of, of seeing if we can work with um, uh, I guess it's better to see if we can get access to those who do pass the two um, tolls or pay the two tolls every day um, or just where they're coming from and the reach that that would give possibly. And then in regards to events, uh, the dynamic fair, um, how dynamic do you see that to be? Would it be like first comers would have a lower rate than um, those approaching the, you know, the, the capacity limit, or is it more based on assumptions around what the expectations are of ridership? I know that we have limited capacity in regards to demand. Yeah, we, we anticipated that this question would come up and, and did have a, a, an initial kind of discussion internally about, you know, what the, the specifics of this might look like uh, when we come back next month. Um, it, you know, just in terms of expectation setting, um, you know, the the uh, dynamic nature would mean, you know, uh, different fares um, by origin, uh, by season. And so there would be a, a, a single fare from Vallejo for baseball and basketball uh, for the duration of, of the season. Um, and then similarly for Alameda Oakland. But, you know, what we would do is um, we'd look at, you know, of the service that we can offer, and this is really the, the part about tying it back to the, the, the service planning process, you know, how can we fully utilize uh, the capacity that we have available? Because we know for, um, for a lot of the, the routes historically, even when the teams are doing poorly, uh, there's a lot of demand for these seats. And, you know, there's a realistic constraint about how much service we can actually offer. So how do we, um, you know, best allocate those seats and um, you know, potentially you know, create some additional revenue for we to to reinvest into its system. Yeah, um, yeah. I think so we, all of us on the board would like to avoid gouging, and so capping, having some kind of caps or um, principles in place, um, I think would be important. Um, I think it would be interesting to hear. I know that the the fare right now is around ten dollars. Um, um, and so, and that's uh, only from, uh, so I like the idea of having variable fare depending on where you're coming from in the service, but understanding the actual cost to the system. Um, and I know that's tricky depending on where the ferry came from and where it's going after and all of that. Um, but understanding that um, will help shape that 
I think. So whatever you guys can do to make it transparent to the board and the public um, prior to the next month will be helpful. Great, thank you, Director Alba. Um, so I wanna thank you, the staff, for, for taking a good hard look at the, the options. Uh, uh, I think um, it's a, an incredibly timely conversation, particularly looking at what what challenges are, are um, as I said earlier, our partner systems are, are going through. And uh, as I've been looking at that, it, it reminds me again, how fortunate we are that that uh, we have the team we have that that flexed early and, and really moved our system, or, you know, our operations away from being so dependent on commuters um, into something that has grown so that we, we're capturing, you know, the weekend ridership and the special events ridership that we're talking about. And, and we have, um, you know, we have moved in a way and that takes all of you that are, are supporting this, this service. So thank you very much. And I, and I hope that our focus as we go forward can continue to be not on what a transportation network and system is and not on what a office commuter system is so that we can continue to diversify uh, our passenger base and, and our services, because um, obviously that's really important. I do think um, that, as you know, I, I, I'm, I, I do think that the financial, uh, the, the economic situation in the broader global and US markets are, are, are tenuous. I, I do, I am very comforted by, by uh, the actions of, of the, uh, related to RM3 last week, uh, that, gives, that gives me great comfort. I, those monies need to be for expansion. Um, so I hope that means that we don't need to, uh, in some way, have to take a step back on on the on you know what those uh, uh, what we've envisioned uh, along those lines. So we can continue on the quest of making this a robust transportation uh, system as opposed to just a downtown San Francisco commuter system. And I, I don't mean to imply that's what it is today. I just want to make sure that we're we continue to. Uh, have that uh, the system reaching everywhere that we want to have it reach. Uh, so I'm 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 not loving. I will say I don't love a five-year lockdown. Um, I think that's too long, uh, it, it, frankly. But uh, since uh, I'm I'm the lone voice, I'm willing to support it. I think the work that you've done every year to survey the passengers. I know it's a lot of work. It's also been highly highly instructive, and your success the last uh, 18 to 24 months is in part because of that. You've listened, you've listened really hard and you've reacted and I don't wanna lose that. Um, so I'd really love to hear in some fashion, whether it's this item next month or May, I think you said, but, or another item, how we can con continue to reap those benefits without, as, as Director Alba said, um, you know, the cost, uh, the opportunity cost of, of taking your efforts away from other equally important work. but. But that voice of the customer ha has been uh, a huge part of, of our efforts and your success. And I wanna make sure that we keep it in place. I also would love to think about, and maybe this is a question for you, Erin, you know, as we look at our annual financials and, and into our budget every year, you know, is there a question we should just ask ourselves about fares so that we don't lose um, the, the muscle that we can look at this, uh, that it's not just a five-year band uh, that there's some band in between. So I don't know what that is today, um, but but I just, I don't want it to kind of get parked on a shelf somewhere. I don't think it will, but when, I wouldn't mind having uh, triggered or just remind the board. I know the staff will not forget. So with that, I, I would say to you, Mike, that I, I really appreciate as always the hard thinking that you and the team do on this. And, um, and I'm very supportive uh, and commend all of you for all the work that you've done. So. Uh, Melanie, is there any public comment on this item that's signed up? No one has signed up to speak. All right. Do any of you on the phone or on the virtual call, would you like to raise your hand and speak? Vice Chair Moir, just so it doesn't get lost, uh, we will uh, come back next month um, and include uh, a report from from Tom, uh, who has a really great market research uh, resources available on his team and and does survey 
uh, not just our riders, which we will continue to do, not just on our service, but on affordability and our fares. Uh, even if we have a multi-year program, we'll make sure that we are reporting to the board on, on customer input. Uh, and then not just customers, but also prospective customers, uh, riders that we that are not using the system today that are crossing bridges that should be uh, ferry riders, uh, focus groups. We have a number of different resources that we can use to tap into those folks and understand the reasons why they make the decisions that they do. So we'll, awesome. we'll come back next month with that information. Thank you. Thank you. And I recognize you're, you're, it seems like you're living living that in all the different projects that you're doing and uh, not the least of which is the, the strategic plan. So thank you for that. Okay. Um, quick question. Um, are, is the typical, I mean, here in the Bay Area, is it typical to do a five-year plan program or is it more typical to do three years? Um, well, I can jump in. I, some of our, I, I certainly don't know every program. Maybe Arthi does, but um, so our regional kind of peers do five years as a standard. Art does five years. VTA does five years. Um, Caltrain, I believe, does five. Um, I think it may be different with smaller properties, um, but they have kind of a different different dynamic in, ter uh, in terms of what they're serving. But it's been the state of the industry for about 10 to 15 years now. Okay. I think that answers my question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's a good answer. Anyone else want to speak up before we move from this item? Okay, I think that was our last item uh, of official on the on the agenda. So the very last item is public comments for non-agendized items. Melanie, has anyone sent you a note about that? Nobody has sent me a note. All right. Would anyone on the on the call like to raise a hand and speak up? Going, going, gone. Okay, well, with that, I think we are going to adjourn at 1.56 p.m. And I would like to, to be a record. You may tell Chair Wonderman that um, his absence was duly missed by about an hour's worth. So thank you all very much. I look forward to seeing you all next month. And again, thanks for the tremendous work. This was a great meeting to celebrate all of that. Wish we could have done it in person. So see you in person next month. Bye now. Thank you.